Now that we have a terrain inside of our environment, something that we can sculpt on, let's go ahead and start working at raising and lowering the terrain, starting to turn it into an environment that we'd want to jump into and run around. So if we'll look at our environment, make sure that we have the terrain selected, and then in our inspector, we're going to go down to our terrain script that was added to it. We see the several different buttons at the top. These represent ways of working with this mesh. The first three are going to work with the actual geometry of it. So the first one is our raise and lower brush. Next to that one, we have our paint height brush. And next to that one, we have our smooth brush. We're going to start off by simply raising and lowering the terrain. Now, it has another additional information down below that says click to raise and hold shift to lower. So let's go onto our terrain. And just with the brush that we get, we're just going to left click. If we left click, we can see that left click and drag, it's creating a terrain. It's also subdividing the geometry. So you can see that as we get to that geometry, it subdivides it, which is doing a nice level of detail for us so that the further away we get, the less geometry there is, the closer we are, the more dense the geometry, the more detail actually shows up in it. So you can see that single clicking is going to apply the amount of uh, strength to that one spot s just by one time. If we left click and hold and move our mouse a little bit, we can raise that terrain. Or if we left click and drag, we can raise the terrain. Really nice, simple interface. Now next to that, we've got additional sets of brushes. These are great little brushes. We've got some with a little less, a little more fall off. We've got a hard line brush which pulls it up. We have some nice little speckle brushes that add some noise into the environment in a good way. We even have a shape so we can apply a star right there in the environment. Or we have some nice little spots that we can pull out if we're trying to create some nice little hilly spots. So good simple little brushes they work really well at creating an environment. Now if we hold shift, left click and drag, we're not actually going to go down any further because we're actually at the zero point of our environment. So if I hold shift and drag on top of an object that's raised above the zero, it actually is going to lower that back down to the zero plane. Now this doesn't work exactly how we'd want because we'd actually want to be able to sculpt down in the environment. You know, create a valley, create a river of some kind. Now to do that, we're going to need to change the height of our actual terrain. So I'm going to go back up to my terrain menu. I'm going to go to my flight, flatten height map. And inside the flatten height map, I'm actually going to raise my entire map up a little bit higher. This way, I have the option in the beginning to go ahead and sink in the terrain or to raise the terrain up. That way, my initial sculpting can be a bit more dynamic than just sculpting straight up. There we go. Now the next brush that we're going to look at, this is our paint height brush, and this one allows us to pick a height inside of the scene. We can hold shift and pick a height where the mouse cursor is at. Let's say for instance we want to paint it about right here. Now when I click there, you're going to notice in the settings down here, the brush size stays uh, the same, the opacity is still there, and then the height actually adjusts based on where I left click inside the scene where the mouse pointer is. It's going to adjust that height. Now when I set that, if I left click to create a higher space, it's going to go right to the height that's set. That way we can set one height that goes no higher than that. And it's a great way of sculpting in, for instance, a roadway or higher plateaus that you're trying to work with. And even just blocking in basic uh, verticals, it's a nice way of setting that up in the beginning. Then our last option is going to be our smooth brush. And the smooth brush is really great at smoothing in 
jagged pointed areas. You can simply just go over, hover, left click and drag and smooth those little spots out so they're not so angular. You don't quite see the geometry in there where you see that four or five polygons all pointing up to an edge. Okay, with our smooth brush, smoothing everything out, we're starting to look pretty good in here. Now the one option that we haven't looked at in our settings is going to be under our brush size and the opacity. Just a little more detail on those. The brush size is simply going to change out the size of our brush. Pretty straightforward. And the opacity is a little bit mislabeled. The opacity is really based is really a strength option. This is how strong the brush is going to come off when we actually click on the button. So for instance, if we're working with our raise and lower terrain, if we have the opacity set to 100, this is going to be full. So the power of it is really strong. It's all the way. Now if I take that and bump that all the way down to, let's say, just about maybe 5, and a single click barely even shows anything up down there. So this will let you see what it means to do either a full opacity or a no opacity is really a strength option of how strong that brush is going to be while you're working with it. So at this point I would encourage you to go ahead and play with the terrain a little bit more. Create some more structures, some more canyons, some different types of uh, environmental hazards if you would and uh, have fun with it for a little bit. The next thing we'll do is start painting on the terrain.